We are in the Silver Bell Cemetery, which was a cemetery that served the two different towns of Silver Bell in two different eras back during the mining days. I'll get more information on that later, but a lot of these grave sites are unmarked with simply a cross or a pile of rocks. There's a couple of them out here. This one is one of them. It's a fairly nice memorial, but most of them don't have any plaques or gravestones on them. So we don't really know who they were. So every time we visit the cemetery, we walk around, stand up the crosses that have fallen, pick up any trash, and just uh, make sure that the area is maintained for the forgotten people that are buried here. As you can see, there aren't any markers, just plain crosses. And so we really don't know who's buried here. But they were people too. Sitting here with Mary Fulton was born April 28th, 1867, and she died on January 18th, 1930. This is one of the nicest grave sites out here in this area. Here's another grave that is marked. John Hoskins. There's actually two markers here. Imagine one of them was added later on. It doesn't have any dates of when he was born or when he passed away, but obviously well loved by family and friends. And if you've ever visited grave sites, you've seen possibly coins and mementos left behind. Coins are typically tokens of remembrance, and depending on the coin that's left, a penny usually means I visited. Nickel can be used to say that you and the deceased trained maybe in the military together, a dime that you served with the deceased. If you leave a quarter, that means that you were with the person when they passed typically used during uh, veterans' visits. Here's a view of the mine tailings at the Silver Bell Mine. Now, the post office there in Silver Bell was established August 18th, 1904, and has not been discontinued. Copper was the mainstay and still is for Silver Bell. Discovered in the early 1860s, ore is still being produced there today. 3,000 people flocked to Silver Bell in its heyday, and Silver Bell was one of the most reowned mining camps in the Southwest. Described once as the hellhole of Arizona, Silver Bell was home to many lawless acts. Just days before Deputy Sam McEven arrived to his new job, three murders had been committed. 1911 marked the beginning of the downfall for Silver Bell, and in 1948, the new town of Silver Bell was born. Now, as we're looking at the mine tailings, we could see the roof of what looked like an old abandoned house and an old car sitting there. So we decided to see if we could hike over and uh, take a look at it. We ended up on the wrong side of the wash, so we had to go back and move to the other ridge, which we did. Here's a view zoomed in from the wrong side of the wash. You can see how steep 
the walls were, there was no way we could climb down and get up the other side, so we ended up hiking around. Quite a bit of trash thrown down in there from years and years ago. You can see where the mine tailings are off in the distance there. So we made it around the wash, got up close to the house, and we saw this really cool looking old car. This is a 49 or 50 Mercury, we think. I know some collectors that would probably love to have this. There's the house right off in the distance there. We'll go in there in a minute. But we'll take a walk around this car, kind of look it over. Arizona is famous for preserving old metal like this. Things don't rust here. Of course, there's not much left of the interior. It's pretty well gone, but still need to look at. Here's the front. You notice the beautiful pack rat nest in the engine bay there. And I was looking for ID labels to see if I could see a year. One of them was there, the other one was missing completely. And my friend that was with me did some research and he's the one that told me it's a 49 or 50 Mercury. Could be made in a, to another vehicle, I don't know, or parts maybe. Here's a view of the house, the front door of the house. Now this appears to be 1950s construction. Many of the homes that were built in Silver Bow were built out of brick and mortar and so they actually relocated some of those homes to Aber Valley. This one wasn't constructed in a way that it could be picked up and relocated. So it remains, and as you can see, it's falling down and won't be much longer before it's totally collapsed. There were no signs here, uh, no fencing. We just walked up here and decided to take a look around.
Thank you for watching. Please click like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.